For the best experience, it is strongly recommended that you participate in this web seminar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Now, throughout today's presentation, you'll have the opportunity to type in and ask questions, so let's talk briefly about how to do that. You want to go to the control panel, click on the question section, enter your question, and click send. And we'll try to answer as many as time allows at the end of our presentation. But remember, you don't need to wait until then. You can submit a question anytime. OK, so your requests were similar to the ones that you were seeing on your screen right now. But based on the popularity of your submissions, the winning entry is an event management solution. Now, there are numerous tasks that can fall under the event management umbrella. Maybe you want to create a conference schedule and associate attendees to the pre-registered uh, events, or maybe you want to create attendee badges, track staff billing, budget drafting, or lodging. So there are a lot of approaches and needs in an event management solution, but in the interest of time, we're going to focus on an event details interface for staff and a vendor page listing allocated uh, resources. So let's go ahead and pick someone from today's attendee list. Um, okay, let's assume that we're all part of an event management company and Eric is our boss. We run multiple events a year and for the most part, things run fairly smooth in the eyes of our attendees. But behind the scenes, it's a bit of a mess and we know, what, we know that we could run a little bit more efficiently. And probably like most of us today, almost all of our data is on their own island. So we have a spreadsheet for uh, the events that we've currently booked. We have a spreadsheet for vendors, uh, the resources allocated to each of our vendors. We also have uh, we have um, our uh, floor plans, photos for the contacts, photos for the different locations that we're at. Again, all of our information is on their own island. It's really difficult to uh, to uh, to find out uh, related information and connecting that related information. It can really be a nightmare when, you know, all this information is distributed across so many spreadsheets and maintaining accurate data can be a headache when multiple people are updating spreadsheets. Now, Eric knows that every year we're spending too many wasted cycles on this and it's costing the company time and money. And that's when I get called into his office. So Eric understands the importance of a mobile solution moving forward and he wants the following. He wants a tool that allows the staff easily access event detail information on the go, a solution that maximizes our workflow, and he wants to connect related information all into one custom solution. So the first thing that I wanna do is make sure that I can get this on an iPad. So I'm gonna create a new database, share it with FileMaker Server, and then connect to it with FileMaker Go on the iPad. And let's go ahead and demo how we would do that. So there's a lot of different ways that we can approach creating a new database in FileMaker. But one method is just if you have a spreadsheet, to take that spreadsheet, we'll start with the events spreadsheet and just drag that right into FileMaker. And right off the bat, FileMaker recognizes that this is an Excel spreadsheet and we're gonna choose the uh, first row to be used uh, to name the fields and click OK. And I'll save this on the desktop and I'll change this name to Event Management and click save. And just like that, we have a FileMaker database. And what you're looking at right now is what we call table view. It kind of looks like we're still in that spreadsheet world, right? We also have another layout when we create, when we uh, drag that spreadsheet over, and this is what we call form view, and you can look at one record at a time, okay? And there's a lot of things that we could do to get started here. Maybe you want to start building out some security, start creating some accounts and privileges into the solution. Um, but really what we want to do right off the bat is make sure that we can actually get this on a mobile device. So what I'm going to do is up at the top here, I'm going to click on the share button and select upload to FileMaker server. Now I have FileMaker server installed in the uh, background of my uh, machine and FileMaker server is really the hub of your solution. It provides the security, the performance and reliability. That's what you're going to use uh, when you host your solutions. So I'm going to click OK. Here. And I'm going to choose uh, my computer, enter my FileMaker server credentials. OK ready to be uploaded, so we'll upload that. 
and we'll open the FileMaker Pro. Okay, done. Now you notice at the top, the name Events Management now has in parentheses, Ryman Nook's FileMaker Server. So that's letting us know, hey, you're currently accessing a file that's hosted with FileMaker Server. Now let's talk about how we can access this from FileMaker Go. What I'm gonna do is launch this third-party reflector app, and this is gonna allow me to share my uh, iPad Air that I currently have in my hands over to the screen. So just give me one moment to do that. Okay. There we go. And that's my iPad right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the FileMaker Go icon right there in the uh, bottom of the screen. So I'll tap on that, FileMaker Go. And this is FileMaker Go 13. And you'll see on the left-hand side, we have a few icons. I'll tap on Recent. That shows me the current servers or files that I've accessed. If I tap on the device icon, this shows me files that I have stored locally on the device, which is a great option if I want to access my, or if I want to continue entering data in areas that don't have a great network connection, if any network connection at all. Then I'm going to tap on the host icon. And this shows me all of the hosts that are on the local area network that are uh, hosting FileMaker solutions. If I want to access a solution that's outside the local area network, I'll just tap that add host option at the top. Let me go ahead and scroll through this list. And here we go, right at the top, I'll see Ryman Nook's FileMaker server. So I'll go ahead and tap on that. All right. And we'll see that events management database that I um, that I uploaded FileMaker server. So I'll tap on that. All right. And in just a, a matter of minutes, really one minute without talking, we have a custom iOS solution. I can even pinch and zoom like you would expect on the iOS device. Now remember how we talked about earlier with all of our information in multiple spreadsheets and it's really difficult to maintain accurate information when we have a lot of people trying to update a single spreadsheet. Well, take a look at this. Let's say that I'm, um, I have my uh, mobile device here and I wanna make a change to uh, this particular event, this tech industry event that we're planning. And let's say that, um, I'm talking to the contact, Sue, and uh, she uh, gave me a new phone number. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the field, okay? And she has changed her name from, uh, her number, updated it to uh, 8737, all right? Now, before I commit this record, go ahead and take a look at my screen here on the FileMaker Pro side, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and commit that. And just like that, the FileMaker Pro displays that change. It doesn't matter where you are in the world or how you're accessing this, accessing this solution, Mac, Windows, iOS, or web browser, everybody sees that change. Let's go ahead and take that a step further, okay? Let's say that uh, we wanna update uh, Sue's email, okay? I'm gonna start editing that on the mobile side. But meanwhile, in the office, we've made some changes as well. Uh, Bill has logged in. He's a coordinator for this event, and he wants to make a change uh, to the end date, okay? So we'll go back to the FileMaker Pro side and watch what happens when he tries to make a change. We get a message saying that, hey, you can't make a change because someone else is already modifying this record. So you could have hundreds of people try, uh, looking at your record, but only one person is able to modify it, okay? And once you commit that, uh, that uh, edit, then, there, then someone else can modify that record. But what that is ensuring us is we're always gonna have one version of the truth. And that's what we call automatic uh, record locking. Okay, so we dragged an Excel spreadsheet into FileMaker. We shared it with FileMaker server and we connected it to uh, FileMaker Go on the iPad. And really, it was just two things, dragging and dropping a file into FileMaker and hosting it with FileMaker server. So in just a few minutes, I was able to provide access to our information on a computer or an iOS device from anywhere on the world. And any changes made are seen everywhere immediately, unlike having all of our information spread across multiple spreadsheets. So I'm feeling pretty good that I can prove to Eric that the first set of criteria is met, but now I wanna make sure that I can create a layout designed for our workflow and optimize for the iOS that display, um, optimize for the iOS. So I'm gonna create a new layout on FileMaker and use tools like popover buttons, tab controls, and container fields to optimize the workflow. But let's go ahead and talk about how we would do that. 
So I'm going to go ahead and close this reflector and jump back into FileMaker Pro. And anytime that we're trying to make changes to the database or the database schema, that always happens in FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Pro Advanced. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this Edit Layout button, and this takes us to Layout Mode. And this is the view where you can uh, make the design changes um, or design and look of your, uh, your database. So I'm going to click on Layouts, New Layout Report. Okay, we have this nice wizard up here, and I want to create an uh, event detail layout for the iPad device or iOS device. Okay, so I'm going to choose touch device. I'm going to choose iPad, iPad mini. It's going to be a form. And then finally, I can choose, do I want to build out in, or, uh, in a um, portrait mode or landscape mode? So I'm going to choose landscape, and then I'll click finish. So what happened? Well, FileMaker has given us a layout that matches the dimensions of the iPad in a landscape mode. And it's also given us a touch theme. And there's 61 themes that you can choose from in FileMaker, and they're completely customizable. And you'll notice that some of these are marked as touch. Let's, let's take a look at the difference. If I go to Enlightened, then Enlightened Touch, Luminous, Luminous Touch, Sophisticated, Sophisticated Touch, all of the touch themes they they have larger fonts and larger objects like you would expect uh, for the iOS device. So we're going to go ahead and stick with a sophisticated touch. And now I need to get all of my information onto this layout. So I'm going to click on this little tool right here called the Field Picker. And here are all the fields that I have uh, that were created automatically for me when I drug that Excel spreadsheet over into FileMaker. Certainly, I could have created these uh, by hand. But uh, since we drug that uh, spreadsheet over, uh, FileMaker just created these for us. And if I want to bring them over into the layout, all you have to do is just uh, grab a field and bring it over just like that. I can even grab multiple fields at the same time and just drag them right over. And you'll see that these blue lines that appear, this is what we call dynamic guides, and they help you uh, quickly align your objects. Now, one thing to note is there's a lot of information that I want to uh, that I want to uh, put on this layout. I probably still want the contact information of the uh, event location. And I don't want to take up much of the space here on the right because I'm going to put things in there for my workflow, like the, a floor plan and a, uh, a map and uh, list other items. So what I'm going to do is we have these great features that are, that are designed for uh, iOS uh, that were introduced in FileMaker 13, like popover buttons. And it's a great way to save some space on your layout. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these fields. And up at the top, if I click and hold on this button icon, you'll see I have two options, a traditional button icon or the popover button. So let's go ahead and click on the popover button. And we'll just draw it out just like that. OK, so now what happens is every time you click on this button, this little popover window will appear. And we can place any type of object in there, you know, objects, fields, it's a great way, again, to uh, save some space. So we'll call this one Event Info. OK, I can choose where I want the uh, window to appear from. OK, I'm just going to choose to appear on the uh, right of that button. So this is Event Info as well. OK, and maybe I want to make this a little bit larger. OK, I'm going to change that color as well. I really want it to stand out when the window appears. So I'm going to choose a new style. OK, we'll choose that. And now again, I'm back to my field picker object. I'm just going to grab a few fields. Let's go ahead and change this so that the labels are on top. And we'll grab the event here as well. Just bring that right over onto the popover, just like that. Okay, it looks like our location field needs to be brought over a bit. Now I'm using, again, the dynamic guides. Perfect. And I can save some face some more by bringing the start date and end date onto the same line. There we go. I like that better. Again, using the dynamic guides to help me prop align this quickly. OK, so we have our event info there. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, duplicate this button. I'm just doing a Command-D or Control-D on Windows just to save some time. OK. And I'm going to call this one 
uh, contact info. And this is going to have the contact information of um, the people running uh, the uh, location that we're going to be running this uh, event in. Let me just highlight all of these. Remove that. Okay, so we're going to take the contact, email, and phone. Bring this right over onto the layout. That. Let's go ahead and make this window a little bit smaller. And align that. Okay, looks good. I'll use this text tool to change the name. Contact info and there we go. Pretty good start. Okay, we probably want an image of the location as well. But if we look at the current fields that we have, we don't have a, uh, a photo field. And that's okay. We'll just click on this new field button right here. And I'll call this photo. And then I'll change the type from text to container. The container field allows us to store images, sound files, PDF files, document files, uh, even movie files. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the label and just bring that over onto my layout. Okay. And make this a little bit larger. Okay. Again, using the dynamic guides to align. It looks pretty good. All right. And let's go ahead and give this layout a title. We'll call this event details. And we'll use the formatting tool up here to make the font a little bit larger. 36 font looks good. Okay. And now I'll go ahead and add my company logo. And I'm not going to put a uh, this image in the container field because I want to make sure that this image is on every record of my layout. So I'm just going to treat it like an object on my layout. Okay, so we'll just put this up here like that. Perfect. And let's go ahead and we'll add uh Let's go ahead and add a title for this uh, this page as well. We really want the uh, event name and the start date to really pop out on this, even though it's buried in this uh, in event info button. So what we're going to do is instead of adding the fields, I'm just going to insert a uh, merge field, and a merge field just grabs the uh, will just grab the data out of uh, the field. And, and these are really great if you want to. Uh, if you have any type of layouts that are like, uh, you know, letters or things like that, where you don't want uh, anyone to really uh, be able to enter information, you just want the data to be grabbed. So I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, event. Okay, so that's a merge field. Okay, indicated by those double brackets. It's going to make this the length of that. And we'll make the size 24 point. And let's bring up our inspector and we'll make this text right in the middle. There we go. And I'm going to insert another merge field. Okay. Again, just grabbing the data of this particular field. We'll get a start date. Again, use the dynamic guides to align here and put that in the center. All right. Pretty good start. Let's go ahead and exit layout mode, jump back into browse mode and see what we've done with our changes. We'll exit layout mode and this is browse mode and this is where you uh, enter your and modify your data. Okay. And if I click on the event info button, there we go. There's the information that was pulled over from the spreadsheet. Okay. You can scroll through as well. You see the, uh, the different types of data. Again, this is a great way to save some space on an iOS device where uh, your real estate uh, isn't really, you don't really don't have that much. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to the uh, first field. You'll see that the merge field, um, also updates as well. Okay. Again, just grabbing that data. Now, what can we do with uh, this photo field that we created? Well, let's go ahead and go back to our, uh, event management assets that we have. We have this photo location and here is an image of, uh, where, um, our event will be held. And just like that, we're already starting to really, uh, connect all of our data. All right, so let's keep building out. We have all this space right here. And I had mentioned earlier that we want to track things like uh, the floor plans for this event. Uh, maybe we want to incorporate a map so we have uh, directions, uh, easy for our staff to, uh, to view. And we also want to track things like, uh, like vendors uh, for each event uh, who will be attending. 
So let's go ahead and there's different approaches for this as well. You know, uh, you could create multiple layouts, but uh, I'm going to use this tool called a tab control. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It just allows you to create tabs on your layout. Okay. So I'll just create that right here. And uh, different tab names. We'll say floor plan, create, we'll say uh, location. We'll have a vendor and, you know, we could even have uh, additional tabs for um, uh, attendees, uh, panelists, things like that. But again, in, in interest of time, we're just going to stick with uh, the vendors. And again, that'll give us an idea of how we would want to approach uh, adding those uh, uh, other type of uh, things that we would want to track. But again, for interest of time, we're just going to stick with vendors. All right. So we're going to choose a uh, full justification here and click OK. And as you can see, uh, we have these different tabs. And what we would do is just put different objects on each tab. And the only way you would be able to see uh, each object uh, is if you click on the uh, appropriate tab. Okay, so you're kind of like stacking them. All right, so click staying with the uh, floor plan. We want to add uh, an image uh, of this particular floor plan. So um, let's go back to field picker. We don't have a um, container field set for uh, the floor plan but again that's okay we'll just click on new field and we'll call this floor plan changes to container all right make sure there's no label that looks good and we'll just bring that right over onto the layout okay and we'll just grab these handles and change the height all right that looks good now in terms of location maybe we want to show again um, where this is on a map. And we have this great tool called a web viewer tool, which allows you to uh, put a web browser directly onto your layout. Okay. So I'm going to uh, just draw this right onto my layout. Okay. And after I draw that, we get this web viewer setup window. And so you can choose custom websites. You can enter in, um, I mean, uh, we have preset websites. You can enter your own custom websites. Uh, by default, it's set to Google Maps. And that's great because we can also pull um, information from uh, current fields uh, into the, uh, the Google Maps. So uh, for the address field, I'm, I want to tell them, uh, FileMaker to uh, grab the information that's currently in uh, this address, city, the current information in my city field. Same thing with state, okay? Just auto-populate that information for me. Zip. Good. All right. And maybe I'm going to uh, let's drag another field out here just to kind of uh, restate where this is. Let's keep this out. Okay. And we'll leave the uh, vendor um, tab uh, blank for now. So let's go ahead and jump back into browse mode and uh, see what we've done with these changes. So we'll exit this layout. Okay, again, we have this empty container field. But again, all we need to do is just drag and drop. So we have uh, floor plans. We'll just take this plan right here, just like that. If we go to location, click on this tab, you can see automatically it picks up the uh, uh, address information and for this particular record. And if we scroll through, you can see that it'll automatically update. So it's a great way for our staff to get that information. If you want to build an interface for attendees to take a look at uh, uh, event uh, information, it's another great way that we can uh, you know, populate uh, where it's located and they can get directions easily. Okay. And we have uh, the name of uh, where we're uh, staying up here at the top just to uh, kind of set home where it is. Okay, so we created a layout optimized for iOS and used popover buttons, tab controls, and container fields to optimize our workflow. So we're almost ready to send Eric our solution and head out of the office well under an hour, but our final task is to connect our related information. So I'm gonna connect event information to vendors and allocated resources to each vendor. And I'm also gonna create a new layout uh, for the vendors for uh, a better interface um, uh, for them. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about how we can do that.
again, we're going to stick in FileMaker Pro because this is where all of uh, the design changes are made, right? So I'm going to go back to uh, edit, lay um, edit layout mode. And remember, we, we have uh, a space here for vendor information. And we showed you earlier, that's currently located in a spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do is, instead of dragging and dropping that into FileMaker, I'm just going to import that right into uh, FileMaker. So I'll go import, and I'm going to choose the vendor's file. Click open. OK. And I'm actually going to create a new table called vendors. And I'm going to choose not to import the first record. That just in includes the field names. So I'm going to go ahead and import that. All right, and we have 140 records. If we go back to browse mode, here they are. We have a brand new table, a brand new layout for the vendors. But again, I want all that information right here on this vendor tab. And in, in order to do that, the first thing I need to do is uh, create a relationship between the tables. So how do we create a relationship? Well, I'm going to go up to File, Manage, Database. And there's a different ways that you can access the at this particular window. But in this window, this is where you can uh, change a database schema. Okay, so we have tables, you can add tables, you can associate fields with those tables, and you can create relationships. And here we have two graphical representations of our tables, the events management table and the uh, uh, vendors table. And to create a relationship, it's really as simple as just finding uh, fields with uh, common information. And in this scenario, it's the event ID. So I'm just going to click and hold the event ID field from the events management table and drag that over to the event ID field in the vendors table. OK, again, I'm just going to delete that and show you how easy it was. Just click and hold and drag it over there. So I'm telling FileMaker, hey, when the events ID field equals the events ID field, allow me to share all that information. When I'm on the vendor page and uh, the events ID field matches uh, the uh, event ID field in events management, let me show all of those particular vendors. OK, so let's go ahead and we'll click OK and jump back into layout mode. And in order to show related records on a layout, we have this great tool called a portal. Again, this is it just uh, it does what it sounds like. It's just a portal, a view into another table. OK. So show related records from vendors. We just create that relationship. Show vertical scroll bar. OK. And just show six records and click OK. And then we can choose uh, which fields we want to display. Um, we probably want to display uh, name and company, but I'm going to go ahead and cancel that because I want to show you that uh, in Field Picker, you can also grab fields from uh, other tables, related tables or unrelated tables. So I'm going to choose the company and name. And I'm going to have this come out horizontally and put the labels on top. This is a great way to uh, quickly create a portal using the field picker tool. All right, and just like that, we have that list. Maybe bring that down a second. All right, that looks good. And I'm actually going to change the style of these fields. Change that to minimal edit box so that all the white background and lines are removed. So let's go ahead and go to, uh, Exit layout, go to the vendors, and there we have it. All of the vendors associated with uh, this particular event. Just like that. Probably align these a little bit better. Again, using the dynamic guides. Sounds good. All right, now we have the space open here. Uh, we, we left that open for a reason. But what we're going to do now is tackle, hey, this is great. We can show uh, the vendors for each uh, event. But now I want to show what uh, resources are allocated to each vendor. So what I'm going to do is uh, first, we're going to import uh, the resources uh, spreadsheet. OK, I'm just going to go to File, Import Records, File, OK. and We'll import that resources, open, OK? It's going to be a new table as well. And we'll choose not to import the first records, OK? Click OK. And we have, again, all of these uh, uh, resource information in its own table. A brand new layout was created. But we want to show this to vendors. But right now, we don't have a layout for the vendors. So we're going to go ahead and uh, quickly create one. 
using the same type of techniques that we just did. So I'm going to go to layouts, new layout report. Okay. This is going to be for the vendors. I'm going to just call this a vendor detail for iPad. It's going to be for a touch device, right? Form, build out on the orientation mode, click finish. Again, we have that layout that has uh, already pre-built to the dimensions of the um, iOS device and landscape. And we'll change this theme to sophisticated touch. All right. And we bring our information over by the field picker, right? And in this case, we don't have uh, that much information that we want to show. Um, oops, let's make this vertical. So we don't need to create buttons for this. We can just show uh, the field just like that on the layout. Just bring this down a little bit. Okay. Now I do want to uh, create a photo field for this. So I want to make sure that uh, when our um, uh, staff takes a look at uh, the vendor page, they're talking to uh, the proper contact. Okay. And we'll remove a label and bring that over onto our layout. Okay. Again, using the dynamic guides to align. There we go. Actually, you know what? Let's bring this up a bit. Okay. And we'll add a title here for the layout page. Vendor detail. Okay. And we'll make this uh, 36 font as well. Try to make it look as similar to our previous layout as possible. And we'll also put our logo on here as well. Again, looking for that uh, unified look across our layout. Okay. Again, just dragging and dropping right there. Perfect. And we'll have uh, some tabs on this layout as well. So let's draw that tool right here. Okay. And we probably want to show the floor plan as well for the current event. Uh, we probably want to add some event details for this uh, as well to show which uh, vendors associated to which uh, event. Um, we probably want to add uh, contracts. Okay. And then we want to add uh, resources. Let's make this a full justification. Create and click OK. And we have our tabs just like we had in the uh, previous uh, layout. So floor plan, we're going to need to create another field like we did last time. So let's call this uh, floor plan. And again, we'll change this to container because it's going to be a uh, image. It's going to store an image. And let's just draw this out quickly. Move this out here. All right. Then event details, we probably want to show um, a map, right? Of where uh, the uh, event is located. So let's go ahead and actually, before we do that, we probably want to add uh, the name of the event and we'll add uh, the location. Bring that over here. Okay. And actually, we need uh, some labels event and location. All right. And we'll add the uh, coordinator as well. Actually, let's, let's change this to event location and start date here. Again, using dynamic guides to align. All right. Oops. Move this out of the way. Bring that over here. Looks good. Okay, now we can draw our uh, web viewer object onto the tab. Okay, and I'm going to choose different fields. This time I'm going to choose uh, the event management uh, address, right? Event management. Uh, city, the event management state, and the event management uh, zip code. Click OK. All right. Uh, contract. We probably need another uh, container field that's going to store our contract uh, uh, PDF files. 
Okay, so we'll change that to container. Okay, and we'll have this out here as well. Let's draw that out a bit. Okay, and then our resources tab. And again, we want to show all of the resources allocated to uh, each vendor, right? So it sounds like we probably need a portal again, right? We want to show uh, related records from uh, the resources table. So let's draw this portal out here. Okay. And we're going to choose, oh, we didn't create a relationship yet. That's okay. So we'll go back to file manage database relationships. There's the graphical representation of our tables. And again, it's all about finding that common uh, information, right? When vendor ID equals vendor ID, allow me to share the information or allow me to pull those records from resources. So we'll click okay. And let's draw that portal again. Okay. Now the resources table appears. Show a vertical scroll bar. I'll just show uh, six here. And again, we probably want to grab the resources ID, which will be the serial number, item, and uh, model. We're going to cancel that because it's just easier to grab the fields from uh, the field picker because again, they give us the, uh, the option to put our fields horizontally and put the labels above uh, the fields. So just like that, we could have uh, those fields on a layout and we'll just change this to serial number. Okay. And here and model. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to browse mode and take a look at uh, our changes. So we added a few uh, photo fields, right? So again, all we need to do is just drag and drop. We have uh, photos of our contacts and we have Doris's picture right here. Again, all of our information is now being put into one custom solution. Okay, we have uh, the floor plans. So I'll just grab uh, this image and put it right here, okay? So they uh, know um, the event uh, uh, breakdown. Okay, event details, I click on this tab. You'll see that uh, it already pulls the information from the uh, event management uh, table. Okay, so we have that listed here. Uh, contract, again, we can just drag and drop. We have our contract here for the uh, uh, vendor exhibitor contracts. Okay, we can just place that there. And uh, resources, we have all of the uh, resources allocated uh, to each person. Let's go ahead and edit this here. And I'm going to minimize this a bit. Uh, changes to a uh, minimal edit box. And let's go ahead and add a uh, signature field. Okay. Now with that signature field, you can actually uh, assign within a container field, but only in FileMaker Go. And I'm gonna demonstrate that in a, in a second. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll grab uh, these fields here. So we wanna make sure that uh, we allocate the, these resources. And we also want uh, the individual to uh, verify that uh, this is the list that they received uh, for responsibility. Okay. So date field, and we'll just put this out here as well. Okay, so we have those uh, fields right there. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna minimize this and bring up Reflector again and bring up the uh, iPad. And give me, again, give me one second to uh, airplay that over to my screen. All right. And it should be coming over right now. Let's see, nope. It's like reflector is a little crazy here right now. Let me go ahead and uh, reopen this. Okay, 
There we go. All right, so I'm going to tap on FileMaker Go down at the bottom. Okay. Put this up here. And this is the original layout that we were working with. So down at the uh, bottom left-hand side, let me go ahead and uh, tap on the uh, vendor detail for iPad that we created. Okay. Look, all those changes that we made, again, like we were talking about earlier, are automatically reflected on the iOS device. We have the floor plan. I can tap on the event details tab. Okay. And just like we'd expect, uh, we have all the information uh, pulling over. Looks like my uh, my Wi-Fi connection is a little bit down for uh, my iPad. That's okay. Um, we have our contract image here, and then we have uh, our resources again, um, listing uh, the resources for uh, uh, each uh, vendor. So uh, what can we do with the signature field? I'm just going to go ahead and tap onto that container field, and you'll see we have a new pop-up window. We have a few options here. I'm just going to tap on signature. Okay, we have this uh, si uh, signature interface. So I'm just going to sign this for doors. Okay. Accept. All right. And then for the date, I'm going to say it's, uh, there we go, April uh, 22nd, 2014. So doors can uh, verify that she has, um, uh, that uh, this is the all of the equipment that is uh, allocated to her. And again, Go to our event detail for iPad. All of the uh, changes that we made are um, immediately displayed onto this uh, iOS device. And those popovers really stand out and look great on the iOS device because again, this is uh, it's all uh, touch driven, right? Okay, so one final piece. In terms of connecting our data, jump back into FileMaker Pro. How do we jump from layout to layout? There's a few di there's different approaches. I mean, you could uh, create uh, buttons that capture which record you were on and um, uh, jumping back and forth using a, like a little script and a button. Uh, here's one way to approach it. Let's go back to the event uh, detail for iPad. I'm going to go to the uh, vendor tab and I'm going to go to layout mode and uh, I'm going to create a uh, button. Okay, and just draw that onto my layout. And I'm going to say, uh, have this button go to related record. And I want to choose a related record from the vendor's source, right? And I want to show the record using the uh, vendor's detail for iPad layout. So click OK, click OK. And we'll just say a uh, view. Okay. Resize this a bit because I'm going to place this in uh, my portal. Okay. Just like that. All right. And let's go ahead and do the same thing on the uh, vendor detail for iPad page. And I'm actually going to put that here on the event details. Okay. Let's go ahead and create a new button. And go to related record from the events management. Event detail for iPad. Okay, I want to show it based off of that layout. Click OK. And say, say view. Just going to tap, add that right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and exit layout. See that our buttons stick here, okay? And event detail for iPad, it shows up in all of our portal. Looks great. But let's go ahead and minimize that and come back to um, our iOS device. Okay, and let me show this over to my screen. There we go. So if I tap on uh, the vendor tab, Let's bring this up the screen a little bit. If I want to see Doris's uh, record, I'm going to tap on View. And just like that, there's Doris's record. If I go to the event details, maybe you wanted to create a little interface for the vendors. Maybe you wanted to uh, uh, give them um, 
a sign on so they can view this particular record and you want them to see the, uh, the event details, they can just tap on that view button. And just like that, the go to related record button uh, takes us exactly where uh, we want to go. Okay, so we created relationships between events and vendors and resources and vendors, and we used a portal to display related information. We also created a new layout for vendors. So we can now go to Eric and show him the solution that we can access anywhere we want. It's built for our needs and it has all of our data in one custom solution. And for Eric, that means we're spending less time bogged down on inefficient processes and freeing up more time and focus on productive tasks that generate our company more money. All right. So I'd like to open it up to Q&A now. If you haven't already, you can go to the uh, control panel and enter your question. And uh, uh, in the meantime, to give you a little bit more time to do so, I'm going to go over uh, a few resources slides. Okay. So uh, if you haven't already, we have the FileMaker training series, uh, uh, which have been released. We have a, a, the FileMaker training basic series, which is free to download on uh, iBooks or the FileMaker website. And we have the uh, FileMaker training series advanced, which I believe is uh, $19.99. It's a great uh, next step uh, for, uh, for uh, building out your solutions and building out a foundation and, and discovering what you can do uh, with a FileMaker platform. Uh, some other uh, resources, if you haven't already, you can download FileMaker Go 13 for free um, on uh, the App Store. Uh, you can download the FileMaker Pro uh, 13 trial on FileMaker.com. Uh, there are more uh, web seminars like this at, in the uh, FileMaker.com forward slash support webinars page. And not just ID to iPad, there's a lot of great content there as well. Uh, that again is a, is a great resource for you to uh, learn about the FileMaker platform and, and enhance your skills. Um, uh, too. And then if you're ready for licensing, you can contact your FileMaker Volume Licensing Sales Rep at uh, the URL above or call 800-725-2747. We have a great annual volume licensing agreement program, which uh, FileMaker Pro starts at just uh, $9 and FileMaker Server is uh, you know just uh, $29. And this is billed annually um, as well. All right, so let me go ahead and... Um, uh, we'll jump into the uh, Q&A. Let me bring up my control panel here really quick so I can uh, view uh, your questions. One second here. Okay. All right. Uh, first question. I have FileMaker Go being shared on a home office Wi-Fi. Can I connect to that hosted FileMaker Go solution when I'm using a different Y connection away from the office? Great question. And yes, you can. Uh, what you saw me do today, uh, I was I was connecting uh, on the local area network, kind of like your home office. But if I'm outside of the home office, what you need to do is uh, there's two different options. And uh, one is set up port forwarding on the host machine's router for port 5003. And that's going to allow any machine from anywhere in the world to uh, uh, access um, uh, your solution. So wherever you are, you can access your solution. Uh, the second option uh, is a, a VPN connection, which allows you to connect directly to uh, your local area network. Uh, if this is your home office, uh, most likely you're not gonna have that, but uh, for anyone else out there, if uh, you're working with a company that has VPN access, you can uh, uh, connect to your uh, hosted solution that way as well. So again, port forwarding for port 5003 on the host machine router or, um, uh, VPN connection, which allows you to uh, join your uh, local area network. Um, can I use FileMaker Go to edit layouts of the solution? Uh, we touched on this a bit. Uh, FileMaker Go is strictly a client application. So you're just connecting to a hosted database. You're uh, editing the information, modifying the information. But if you want to make changes to the database schema, like we did where we added fields and uh, you know created relationships, or if you want to make changes to the design and look of the solution, uh, you know how we're adding like those tab controls, and adding those buttons and changing colors. Um, all of that happens within the FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Pro Advanced, um, uh, FileMaker Pro Advanced uh, applications. All right, next question. Can I use FileMaker Go with FileMaker Pro using peer-to-peer -peer network sharing with three users connecting? You can in FileMaker Pro, uh, if you host, it actually allows five connections. 
Um, what you saw me to, uh, do today was host with FileMaker Server. And really, when you're hosting a productive uh, a, uh, a solution in production, you want FileMaker uh, Server. Uh, one, it's it's built to be a server, so you're getting better performance. It, uh, ha it it's multi-threaded. So if you have uh, multiple users and you're performing tasks at the same time, uh, FileMaker Pro, if, it, if it's the host, it's going to set up a queue. Uh, FileMaker Server is going to uh, handle them all at once. Uh, it offers the um, uh, reliability. It has automatic backups. So it takes that responsibility out of your hands. You can set up as many backup schedules as you want. Uh, if you're hosting with FileMaker Pro, that means you have to create the uh, backups yourself and test them yourself. And if you can do that, uh, you know, uh, uh, kudos to you. I know that uh, I, I will not be able, <laughs> I wouldn't trust myself to, to uh, consistently create uh, backups. Um, and uh, most importantly, security. Okay. If you are accessing your solution, uh, you know, outside of your local area network, then, uh, you know, you, you definitely need FileMaker uh, server. And, you know, that's not just a, uh, a recommendation because I'm a, a solution consultant. It's, you know, you, you need it. Uh, FileMaker Pro, if it's the host and you're connecting outside of the local area network, it sends that information in plain text. There's no security. There's no encryption. Uh, FileMaker server with just a checkbox, it uh, enables um, an SSL encryption from client to the database server. And if you want to set up a web um, environment, it encrypts the uh, web publishing engine to the database server, which you could use in conjunction with your typical uh, SSL certificate so that web browser to database server is all um, uh, secure as well. So uh, technically, yes, you can host with FileMaker Pro using peer-to-peer -peer network, but um, I, I never value concurrency over security, reliability, and performance. All right, can FileMaker also do barcode scanning? Great question and uh, appropriate question as well. It, FileMaker 13 um, just introduced uh, the ability to, uh, uh, to leverage the iOS device's uh, camera so you can scan items. So you don't need a third party uh, solution. Uh, now, that being said, there are scenarios where having a, a third party solution uh, with a uh, Bluetooth um, uh, device is going to be more appropriate than using the iOS scanner. Uh, you know, let's say you're in a warehouse and you have to continually fill um, uh, orders, right? And it's just really fast paced. In that scenario, a, a handheld Bluetooth scanner is going to be is going to be more appropriate because you can quickly scan a lot of items. Um, if you're uh, doing some like you know local inventory, or if uh, you know uh, you're doing some uh, 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 like point of purchase. Uh, in your uh, like uh, in your um, in your store, but that's not uh, you know in like super high demand or a high uh, uh, influx of people. Then uh, you know that'd be a good uh, option for you. Um. Okay. The next question: Can you have a back button that would bring you back from uh, view vendor to the record you were just on? Yeah, you uh, you can. And um, this is what I alluded to uh, in different approaches. This is how you, um, it would require some scripting um, uh, to do. We, we don't have a, um, a, uh, a a button or a script step that just says, go back to where I, where I just was, right? We have a button that says, go to, um, go to layout. You can specify that layout, but you may not go to the, uh, the particular um, record that you want. But uh, what you can do is uh, you can set a script using uh, the set variable script steps. Okay, so set variable is a script step that allows you to grab dynamic data, right? So if you point it at a field, you don't want to hard code information. You just want that dynamic information that uh, for the uh, data that for the record that you're currently on. But you could set uh, a variable to capture the layout you're on, and then uh, set a variable to capture the uh, record that you're on. Okay. And, uh, and then uh, you could have that button run that script, you know, you would set it up as uh, uh, global variables. And, um, and then you would um, run that script, it points that global variable and send you shoot you back to uh, where you were. Okay. Uh, the next question is FileMaker server normally hosted on a uh, server farm or a uh, desktop laptop. Okay. Uh, great question. You actually, with FileMaker Server, there's two options. You can host it yourself, okay? Um, so you can, uh, and, and uh, this question put desktop or laptop. Um, yeah, you know, 
typically you would want it on a uh, you know a desktop uh, machine or like you know like a Mac Pro machine or Windows Server machine. Um, but uh, yeah, you can host it in house where uh, you know you maintain the FileMaker server and uh, you know you set up the backup schedules, you uh, you uh, administer the solutions, uh, things like that. Um, there are also options like the uh, uh, hosting solutions. There's hosting providers out there that that offer a uh, FileMaker service. So uh, all you have to do is uh, you know provide the clients and maintain the database, but on the back end they will handle the uh, FileMaker uh, server solution. Or there's places like um, there's like Rackspace that uh, offers uh, uh, just like a space that you can install software on, like you can install FileMaker server on their space where you would still administer it, but uh, but uh, the uh, uh, software itself would be uh, hosted elsewhere. So you have those different um, options to go with. Uh, if you're thinking about a hosting company, just keep in mind um, it has to it has to provide a FileMaker um, service. So FileMaker uh, shares software in a host client model. So you have FileMaker serve as a host like you saw, and then uh, the client applications connect to that host like uh, FileMaker Pro, FileMaker Go for iOS, or a web browser. So places like GoDaddy, for example, uh, that just uh, you know offer like websites. If they don't have FileMaker on the back end and can't complete that FileMaker uh, host client model, then uh, you know you wouldn't go with them. You would want to specifically look for a hosting company that offers a FileMaker service. Okay, uh, the last question and really great questions, guys. Is the barcode scanning automatic in the container field, or do I have to script it? Um, you can set it up so that well, you have to script it. Because you'll need to grab, um, uh, you'll need to uh, parse out the information. So uh, you can set up a container field so that it um, automatically points to the barcode. It will uh, scan it, but then you want to uh, use scripting and calculations to grab the information and you know uh, point it to uh, you know the different fields um, or, and how you want to break down uh, whatever uh, information is returned as well. All right, um, and actually, uh, we have one last question. Can we rewatch this session? Yes, and it will be posted to www.fondmaker.com forward slash support forward slash webinars. Again, uh, there are a lot of great uh, resources there as well, not just Idea to iPad uh, that you should check out. And um, uh, again, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, check them out. And uh, I think, yeah, that's uh, all the questions. That's all the time we have uh, for today for the questions. Um, on behalf of FileMaker, it was my pleasure to chat with you all again, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.